Welcome to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. Are you ready to discover some niche business ideas that actually work? Well, it's time for a motivational kick to jumpstart your next big idea. Here's your host, Spencer Haas. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Haas from nichepursuits.com. And today I have somebody joining me as a guest on the podcast. His name is Scott Williams. And Scott's story is pretty interesting because like many of you, he has tried and failed to build a few niche websites and his luck changed when he decided, you know what, instead of just trying and building everything from scratch, I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy a website that's already making money so that I can use that website and kind of learn from it. What's working on that website? Why is it doing so well? And so he invested some money, about $28,000, to buy a website making about $1,000 back in October 2016. So just a few months ago, uh, four or five months ago. And that has turned out to be a great investment for him so far. Uh, The site, as of January 2017, is making about $2,200 per month. And so Scott has done... Uh, very well. He's doubled the revenue of that website. And so during this interview, we're going to dive into what's working well for him, what he did to revamp the website and make it perform better. And then of course, what he's done now in terms of link building and outreach and a few other things in between. So hopefully you enjoy the interview. Hey, Scott, welcome to the Niche Pursuits podcast. Hey, thanks a lot, Spencer. Glad to be here. Yep. It's good to have you on here as well. What I love is that uh, I've been doing a few interviews with Niche Pursuits podcast listeners and readers that are having some success with their niche sites, and you certainly fit into that category, um, Mm -hmm. and we're going to jump into that. But before we do, can you give us an idea of your professional background, You know, what you either do for work now or previous to uh, building websites? Yeah, so I guess in the past, um, I've done a lot of sales. Um, I was the door-to-door salesman for security alarms and financial services networking, net marketing company and got my real estate license, which I still have. Um, I'm still active in, so I still do that. And I'm, I'm pretty decent at sales but and made some good money, but just the hustle of sales just gets to you sometimes. And I just want an area where I can get out of that. Yep. Uh, I kind of take no's personally sometimes. So. Sure. And you're not supposed to. Um, <laughs> I also went back to school, um, got a graphic design degree. I learned a lot about web design, user experience design, really just how to communicate visually. So during school, my dad owned a business and he let me work for him a little bit during school and after. And I, I uh, helped him with his Internet marketing for his websites. And we actually created a small little uh, e-commerce site, which was kind of fun. That was kind of my first exposure into building websites, but that's kind of my background before all that happened. So. Okay. So give us a timeline, maybe not a timeline, but um, when was the first sort of e-commerce site that you mentioned? Uh, when did you build that? That was probably about five years ago. Okay. He owned, he owned a hearing aid store company, so he wanted a site that talked more about earplugs and selling earplugs and really anything about the ears. The, the domain was cheaper, plugstore.com, and we made like 200-ish a month without doing any any like SEO or link building or anything because I had no idea what that, any of that even was. Right. Uh, we just built it and tried to see what would happen, and it actually made a little bit of money. But he sold the business um, in 2015, and the company wanted that website as well, but they're doing nothing with it. So... Yeah, that was probably my first one. Yep, but that gave you some good experience. And so where did you kind of go from there as far as your online business? I mean, yeah, what what other websites did you build or ventures did you pursue to sort of lead you to where you are now? So I uh, I built four websites total, probably one after the other, um, thinking like, oh, yeah, that e-commerce site did good. This is easy. Mm-hmm. And that definitely isn't the case, right? So I, I built four had no success on the four, made no money on those four and, um, kind of gave up a little bit. I, but then I started following blogs like you and, um, some other people and they were great. Um, they kind of motivated me a little bit more and kind of finally I was like, you know what? I just need to just buy one. (laughs) I don't think that that's something that 
um, a lot of people jump to like, oh, I'm going to go spend thirty thousand dollars after failing on four that were free. Um, <laughs> right. But that's that's a step that I decided to take. And it, and it kind of worked out for me. So that that is interesting, because I do think a lot of people have the same sort of Genesis story mm-hmm. that they try a couple of websites and maybe they don't perform that well. That certainly was my story as well. I you know, built uh, a few websites that never really went anywhere, but I caught the bug. Mm-hmm. Uh, and luckily, I stuck with it, and I kept building, uh, but I never bought. So mm. take us through that decision, uh, sure. at, at least to get started. I have purchased websites now, but early on, I, that never crossed my mind. So what sort of led you to that decision to, yeah, buying um, such a, a, a big website? Well, I met um... – I know a guy down here. Um, I don't know if you know him, uh, Kurt Christensen. He's he's kind of a uh, he does a lot of seminars for internet marketing. I think he he kind of talked to me about how he got started, and he's like, you know, I I used to buy websites, but that was like a long time ago. And and after I had failed on the four, I uh, that kind of popped into my mind. I was like, you know, I'm going to look into that. So I kind of looked into that a little bit, and what was attractive about it was, gosh, if I could get a website. That's already making some money. Maybe I can see how it works on the back end. Maybe I can see the inner workings of a successful site that's gained traction in Google and I can really see how it all works and really what I'm doing wrong and what I need to do there. So that's that's really what led me to buy one. Okay. And, and so I did a lot of research and keyword research because I, I gained a lot of knowledge in all my research to figure out how to do that and, and what a good site would be. Um, and still, I really didn't. That was all knowledge because I had no experience. So I, I kind of got lucky, I feel like, and got a really good one that could grow. And um, so, where did you find the site? Uh, we went to went through Empire Flippers. Um, Great. That's where I yeah. I, that was I, I looked at a lot of different ones like Flippa and and things like that. But Empire Flippers, I felt most confident about. Mm-hmm. And so we went with them. And so, how much? Was the site making when you purchased? And if you don't mind sharing, what did you pay uh, for the site? Yep. So I bought the site the first week of October, and it was about a thousand a month is what it was averaging. And they had a twenty-eight times multiplier, so it was about twenty-eight thousand and some change. I forget the exact. Right. Um, and so we, yeah, that's it was about twenty-eight, and it was averaging a thousand. And so when you say October, just this previous October, twenty sixteen. Yep. Four months ago, four or five months ago. Okay, and you keep saying we. Is that uh, you and a partner, or? Yeah. So um, my dad helped me out in there. Okay. Um, I didn't have the full thirty, so I, I got a nice little personal loan from him, and uh, he helped me out. Very cool. No, that's awesome. So it's been four months. Uh, mm-hmm. The site was making a thousand dollars a month. How's the site <laughs> doing now? It's doing great. So in November. It made, uh, I doubled it. It made over 2000 in December. It peaked at 3,200. Um, thanks, thanks to the holidays, of course. Yep. And then in January, it just finished at around 2200. So, Hey, that's great. Yeah. No, that's a really good sign. Obviously. Yeah. November and December, there's going to be a bump there due to the holidays, Mm -hmm. but seeing that January, it's still over double, um, what it did in October. I would say that's, uh, that's excellent to have. What do you think the reasons are for that? What have you done to increase the earnings there? Yeah, that's a good question. So when I bought the site, because of my graphic design knowledge um, and user experience knowledge, I did a lot of visual design changes um, because I know that doing that just to make it look professional and good and have a good logo, it converts better. So since I didn't know a whole ton about SEO, but I still knew a little bit, um, I didn't do that yet. I did a lot of just redesigning and making page flow better and user experience better. And I saw a bump immediately just after that. So um, that was that was a good sign. OK, interesting. Let's let's dive into that a little bit um, sure. to give us a better idea. I mean, was it just I mean, you mentioned logo and some graphic design. Mm-hmm. What, did you also change the layout and how the site flowed itself? Yeah, I did. The logo was definitely, I always tried to do that because I like to get a better identity. Like I, I treat 
the website like its own identity. And I feel like the logo is that face. So I always change that, but I also definitely change the pages and the flow and have really good content on those posts and make sure that they're flowing really nice for the reader and that it doesn't look just like this academic paper or they get bored and then they leave with. And so I make sure that there's buttons and there's easy ways for them to click those buttons and that they're not spammy either. Um, so um, just make it look real like a real site that someone wants to read and that it flows and it's easier for easy for them to scan and go through. Absolutely. I, I agree uh, with that. That can go a long way. And um, we're not going to share the domain um, on the podcast uh, like we talked about before, but I, I can see the domain. Uh, you shared it with me privately and, you know, I'm kind of looking at the overall uh, layout and feel of the website and, and it is, it's great. I see that in at least the couple of articles that I've clicked on, uh, you're utilizing sort of comparison charts, sure. you know, that uh, are fairly typical, I guess, for Amazon uh, affiliate sites. Uh, mm -hmm. were, were those in place before or is that something that you added after? Um, they were, um, but they didn't look very good. And so I just kind of revamped them and they were there were really small pictures in them, which I kind of took out. Um, cause they can view the pictures bigger later. I mean, I added a check price button so that they could actually click through cause there wasn't really anything to click on the, on the old comparison tables. So it was losing a lot of probably the conversion there because there just wasn't any experience for them to click through and see what. They Interesting. Were Interesting. So do you remember what they were using before? If it was like a table press plugin or something like that. So the site. Yeah, when I bought it, it had Thrive Content Builder, I think. Okay. Uh, and so they just used one of the tables that were inside of that. And so I just I just continued with that and just added on with those tables. But I do have Table Press on there, which Table Press works great. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, for some of them I have Table Press working on the pages, and for some I just is using the Thrive table on the Content Builder. Okay. No, very cool. Um, that's awesome. So. So you've, you've purchased the one site, the other sites that you've built from scratch haven't really taken off too much at this point. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, and mainly because of my lack of knowledge, but now I'm going to get busy and get them going and we'll see how they do. So what is, what's the plan going forward with the site that you purchased? What, what is your plan to grow it even further? I want to make it an authority site. So I want to just grow and expand it like crazy. So I hired a virtual assistant and she's going to do a lot for me to leverage my time. I can't do it all myself if I want to grow a lot and fast. So she's doing a lot of outreach for me for guest posting and things like that. She's also writing some content and she's kind of managing some of my flow and getting some blog comments in on other people's pages. Um, just for outreach and a little bit of social media while I do a lot of the optimization and I do also doing some outreach there uh, for link opportunities, link building opportunities and things like that. So that's kind of my first step into growing. I'm definitely going to add more posts and keywords and, and just lots of link building. And I would like to dive into link building strategies here in a second, but sure. since you purchased the site, have you added content? And if so, how much have you added? I have, I've probably added probably on average about six posts a month. So what is that? About 24 new, okay. some, some informational, some commercial for the, to get people to click through Amazon. Um, yeah. So I've, I've added quite a bit just so I can get my keyword count up. Um, mm -hmm. so I can get more, more ranks. And do you remember how many articles the site had before? <laughs> yeah, it had about 60, I okay. think, um, somewhere in there. So you've increased it by a third or so. Yeah. Yep. Yep. No, that's awesome. I'm, I'm a big fan of content. Um, so I would encourage you to keep that up. Okay. Uh, just continue to, yeah, find new low competition keywords. Just mm -hmm. try to be consistent about putting out great content because it, it really is fairly simple, right? I mean, if you're trying to rank for more keywords, you probably right. are going to rank for more keywords right. uh, as long as you're giving readers what they want. And of course, what Google wants, which is, you know, high quality content, end up reviews, uh, the things that you've already got. So I would definitely encourage you to yeah continue to uh, build out content and do that keyword research. Uh, the other thing that I do want to ask about is link building. So what link building strategies have worked well for you on the site? 
Well, the top one right now is guest posting. So I know that it's slow and it's tedious and it's hard work, but it's something that I feel like is really valuable, especially if I get some good guest posts with good sites. So um, I get like a 4% conversion rate. I don't know if that's good or not based on what I do. I've, I've outreached to like 100 and gotten like, yeah, so it's I've gotten a lot of guest posts, which has been great. And those have been really quality ones that I feel I've been trying to avoid black hat stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of scared of it. I'll especially like PBN. So I bought the site actually. It had a small PBN, but I didn't know much about it. So I'd like to do more research on that sometime and see what the benefits are on there. But for now, just trying to stay white hat and um, guest posting for sure is the number one for now. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, avoiding PBNs is a good idea. At least that's what I would recommend um, and trying to stay as white hat as possible. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people love sort of gray hat or PBN type things, but I think in the long run, if you're really trying to build a sustainable website and a sustainable business, mm -hmm. just you know, do things that uh, Google approves of. Right. Uh, that you know are going to work long term and you don't have to worry about anything. The other sort of benefit is that if you ever decide to go and resell this website, if you decide, you know what, this site's making three thousand dollars a month, I can triple my money. Let's just sell this thing. Right. You know, um, you'll get a higher multiple if you don't have a PBN involved. Oh, nice. Because there's some risk there, you know. So Empire Flippers tend to disclose that to buyers, and they say, hey, there's a PBN, and the multiple is usually a little bit lower. So you can command a higher price if you do everything uh, white hat. Um, yeah. So. So that's something to keep in mind. Yeah. So guest posting, how are you finding sites to reach out to? So I'm using just, I think they're called Boolean search, search things where you like put site colon and then just the website. And then, so I'll do that and domain and then I'll put like guest posts or write for us and just do a lot of different ways to try and search for those. And I'll actually, um, instead of just leaving the search just to let it be, I'll actually go to tools and Google and, and and do a time frame rather than open ended. Let's see the, the how who's doing this forever. I kind of go for like the last month first for that specific and see what comes up in the searches for the last month, which has been really good for blog commenting, too, which I've, I've kind of appreciated because they're a little bit more recent. So I've been doing that to find um, and I just outreach to everybody that I can through email. I'll do some pre outreach a little bit, kind of like them on Facebook, pat them on the back a little and do some comments and then outreach to them and see if they uh, will let me guest post on theirs too. And it seems to work fairly well. Yeah. So it sounds like it's all fairly manual process. Are you using any tools to help you along the no, way? It's, it's all manual and probably slower than it should be, but it's all manual. <laughs> Hey, that's okay. It seems that you've gotten a few links that way and the site's growing, um, right? So yeah. uh, things seem to be working. There, there are certainly tools if you decide to, you know, do more outreach or do it on a larger scale and, you know, you can look into it. There's tools that will help you email people, uh, okay. you know, like GMAS is, a, is sort of a way to email lots of people um, a similar thing at once through Gmail. And, and there's other tools that can maybe help you find contact information like BuzzStream for websites. Because it sounds like you're probably visiting every website. You're seeing if they have a contact page or an email listed somewhere, right? Yeah. And and, um, and that can be time-consuming yep. as well. So Very. there's tools like uh, BuzzStream that you basically just plug in the URL, and it'll find the contact information for you. Um, oh, that's great. You can save a little bit of time. Oh, yeah. Probably tons of time. Any other link building strategies that you're using right now besides uh, sort of blog commenting and guest posting? No. So I'm actually starting a scholarship program. I've heard some good things about that. I've heard that it's kind of an old process, mm -hmm. but I still like to kind of see if it works or not. So I'm just kind of testing. That's one thing that I've kind of learned online is you just kind of test and see what works for you. And um, that's kind of what I've been doing a little bit, just kind of testing stuff out and seeing what works even if stuff is kind of an old, old strategy. So yeah, I'm doing the scholarship thing um, just to kind of see if that's going to work or not. Yep. No, that can be a good one. It's one that I've done in the past for sure. And you can absolutely get links from great .edu domains. Mm -hmm. um, it sometimes is questionable whether or not 
how valuable that link is. I think it can depend, right? Okay. You know, if you're listed on a scholarship page that has 500 other scholarships on that page, maybe mm -hmm. your link isn't that valuable, right? Right. Um, yep. But other times you're listed on a page that has a little bit more authority and, and that can be valuable. So it can be hit and miss at times, but I think it's absolutely worth uh, testing out because it's a great uh, outreach tool, uh, something that you can say, hey, we're doing a scholarship and people are usually willing to listen to that. Yeah. OK, great. So when you look at uh, what you've done in the last four months, you purchased the site, you've added content, you've done some link building, you've done some design changes. Um, if there was one thing that you think has been the most effective, um, what would that be? Well, based on the probably the guest posting, actually, uh, because I got a lot of immediate traffic from the guest posts, which was great, okay. uh, which led which led to a few sales. So that was good. And then I know that in the long term, my uh, my domain will have more authority as it grows and gets more of those links there. So I think uh, I think that's probably been the most effective is the guest posting. Cool. Yeah, that is something that uh, I don't always think about. And maybe a lot of other people don't think about is that you can get that direct traffic. You know, hopefully if you're on a po posting on a site that actually has readers, actually gets traffic. Right. Uh, uh, there can be a lot of direct clicks coming over to your site. Mm hmm. So that's awesome. Very good. Any other tips for building or buying niche sites that you'd like to share that's worked for you? Yeah. So because I had some failures in the past and then I get to see how this kind of works, I'd probably the tip or the value that I'd probably like to share that has affected me the most is actually following because I'm still learning, right? Um, mm -hmm. Just following one mentor or one or two, uh, preferably one um, or a blogger that teaches this stuff when you're really just starting out or just trying to figure out what to do if you're kind of in a slump, um, I feel like it's easy to get pulled in multiple directions, which I'm definitely um, have done. And I, when I try to do that and apply lots of different strategies from different sources, it just gets crazy and it's, it's backfired. And I don't think that that's, I think if the, the tip that I'd say is to follow one guy, one mentor or whoever, and, learn from them and do what they do and then get some success and then move on to the next and maybe apply some new strategies after that. And that's my goal anyways, just to continue to do that until I've perfected those things or at least come close and then move on. So that's a great tip. I think a lot of people, especially people just starting out can have that information overload, right? right. They're, they're trying to read everything, listen to every podcast and, they can get stuck. They're not sure. Okay. They have 50 different ideas and not sure where to start. So I agree. I think uh, just finding one or two people that their strategies seem to work and sticking with that and sort of developing a plan and, mm -hmm. and trying to focus. I think that's a great reminder for everybody. So I am maybe going to turn the tables just a little bit. Do you have any final questions for me? Anything you'd like to ask me about either your new site or building sites or anything in general? Yeah. Thanks for the turn the tables. I wish I would have prepared some questions, but I'll just, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just throw some stuff out there. So, um, for somebody new like me, um, who's kind of, I mean, I have a little bit of experience like building and designing them, things like that, but really making money, it's only been like a four month thing. Thanks to buying it. But if I wanted to start like a new one, um, or things like that. What would be too many websites to do? Should I just focus on this one till it starts making my desired income? Should I work on this and also, um, maybe build one from scratch? What's your, what's your advice there? Boy, that is a great question. Um, it, I think it comes down to how well you think you can set up systems and mm -hmm. how much money you're willing to invest in your business, right? If you're willing to reinvest essentially every penny that's coming in from the site that you purchased, you probably have enough funds there where you could hire. Uh, I think you already mentioned hiring a VA, right? But right. Uh, you could hire one or even two VAs to be doing a lot of work for you. I think when you're starting out, I think focusing on one website is probably the best strategy. And once that starts to see some traction, like it's making you know, pick a number, but I would say at least 
two to three hundred dollars per month, mm -hmm. right? For people, then maybe move on to the next website. So I think at this point you would be fine going out and starting one more website and mm -hmm. just focusing on those two until you see the second website start uh, getting some traction, making two, three, five hundred dollars per month, and putting some sort of VA or system in place where they're doing a lot of the manual labor and then you can move on and start another one. So that, that would be my advice on that. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yep. And, um, you know, I, I sometimes have this problem for myself is, you know, because I have, you know, I have several websites that I'm working on and I think, okay, what can I handle now? And it <laughs> comes down to how much am I willing to invest and am, am I willing to hire somebody else to help me out? Um, right. Because, you know, I don't have a lot of time at this point to do all the work myself. So sometimes it comes down to that. What are you willing to invest? What are you willing to risk? Mm -hmm. so, OK. OK. Awesome. No, great tips for what you've learned building your what or, you know, buying and building out the website. I think we've pretty much covered everything that I wanted to cover. But okay. do you have anything else that you'd like to share or any parting words of wisdom or anything like that? Uh, sure. I think just the last thing is to just do it. That's that's something that has taught me just to go for it. Um, I think stop waiting for a perfect program to come out or more time to come in your life to start. I think a lot of people like when I talk to, they're like, oh, I just I don't have a lot of time. I just want to do this. And they end up watching a show on Netflix. <laughs> right? yep. um, nothing will change unless you do, I guess. So if you want something, you got to get it out and do it and get go work hard and until it works. So I think that's just kind of one last, one last plug out there to, to go out and do it. So everybody go out there, take action. I agree. I think that's excellent advice. So Scott, thanks for being on the podcast. Yeah, thanks a lot. And Appreciate if people did want to get in touch with you, is there any way that they can do that? Yeah. Uh, so I, I have a personal site, um, that, people can contact me through there. Um, it's not, it's not much. It's just there for me that I keep notes on there. Actually, I use it as a way to gather a lot of info and remember stuff. And the goal is to make it like a tracking system for my success later. But for now, it's just there. People can go there. It's bloggingtrainer.com. Um, and so they can, they can contact me there if they'd like. Perfect. So bloggingtrainer.com. Uh, if you want to get in touch with Scott, you can do that. Um, like I said, Scott, thank you so much for being on the podcast. And, yeah, thanks a lot, Spencer. And thank you, everybody, for listening.